Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bioprocess International Vi Viral Vectors Digital Week, brought to you by the producers of the face-to-face -face Bioprocess International events, visiting Dublin in December 2023 and San Diego in March 2024. My name is Barry Walsh, and I'll be your host for today's session titled Rapid and Serotype Agnostic Analytics of Viral Vector Samples with Max Photometry. Now let's begin by introducing our speaker, Sebastian Hughes, from, who is a field application specialist at Refine. Thank you for joining us today, everyone. Now I'll hand it over to Sebastian to begin his presentation. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Barry, for the for the kind introduction, and welcome everyone from my side as well to this webinar within the BioVectors Digital Week on Thursday, the second of November. Um, as mentioned, my name is uh, Sebastian Jürgs. I work as a field application specialist for Refine, and uh, yeah, the title you can read here. So today, let's talk about the rapid and serotype agnostic analytics of BioVector samples with mass photometry. And to start it off, um, I would like to start looking at the technology gap that is existing when we look at the production of AAVs, because uh, one of the biggest challenges that we see and face in the production of AAVs is that not all viruses are full, meaning that not all of the viruses contain the genetic material that is needed for the successful application in gene therapy, but are merely an empty capsid, as you can see here on the left-hand side. Um, in fact, many processes uh, produce far more empty particles than full ones, and that can possess uh, significant risks. For example, low transduction efficiency due to receptor binding competition, um, an increased immune response, a limited target genome concentration due to um, capsid precipitation, and an increased costs of goods produced. A major reason for the high amount of empty particles, even at the manufacturing level, is the lack of a technology to rapidly and easily determine the ratio between empty and full AV particles, specifically also during early process development. We think that the right analytical solution to this problem should have the following uh, properties. So it should be accurate um, to be able in, uh, for determination of empty full ratios within minutes. You should be able to quantify also partially or overfilled AV particles. We should look at a low sample volume that needs to be used and a low particle concentration. It should be an easy to use um, system at low operational costs. It should be serotype agnostic and it should be applicable at different purification stages. So we strongly believe that mass photometry can fill that technology gap for the fast and easy assessment of the AAV empty full ratio. So. Um, to explain this a bit further, let's start by looking on the upper left-hand corner and let's see how mass photometry can uh, work to measure the weight of molecules using light. So when we measure AAV particles in solution, we have a glass surface that I will depict here in blue for you. And um, towards this glass surface, we have the AAV particles that will bind to the glass liquid interface and then we will have upon landing on this glass surface, these particles will scatter light. This scattered light will interfere with light that is reflected from the same glass surface. Um, the interference that is caused between the scattered and the reflected light is a constructive interference, and that results in interference patterns, as you can see them here in the centerpiece of this presentation. And what is very important is that each individual particle will give rise to one independent um, of uh, one independent pattern here, which means that we are working at single molecule resolution, which can be detected by our camera. Interestingly, the contrasts that are generated here by every individual single particle um, and how dark it actually becomes, so how dark the center is versus that it gets lighter, is depending um, on the scattering capabilities, meaning that the more scattering we see, the bigger and the more optical dense the particle is. And both of those parameters directly correlate with the weight of the molecules. 
Hence, by analyzing the contrast that we can see here, we can directly determine the molecular weight of uh, respective um, particles by performing a molecular weight calibration. The outcome of a mass photometer at the end of the day will be a so-called mass histogram that you can see on the lower left-hand side, where on the y-axis we will get the counts, and on the x-axis we will get the contrasts that have been generated by our independent particles, and that contrast, again, with uh, performing a molecular weight calibration, we can then change into the molecular weight of our single particles in solution. Um, what is now relevant is why and how does mass photometry work when we are looking at AAV samples. So in case of AAV samples, we are looking um, at particles in case of empty and full AAVs that do not show any size difference. However, full AAVs will contain a DNA cargo that will basically um, mean that we have a difference in the molecular weight of those particles. Empty AAVs can usually be found around the 3.7 megadalton in molecular weight, while full AAVs, depending on the DNA cargo, can be found between 4.1 to 5.3 megadalton in size. And this then allows us that those independent particles can be, so, uh, can be shown in a mass histogram for a mass photometer, as you can see on the lower right-hand side, where on the y-axis we have the single particle counts for a mass histogram, and then we can nicely see the two peaks for the empty AAVs and the full AAVs. More importantly, there is no interference of any contaminants, because those contaminants would usually be found at molecular weights that are below uh, to megadalton in size. So now I am very happy to um, introduce to you the mass photometer that has been dedicated to perform AV analysis, and that is the SAMUX MP instrument, as you can see it's here on the left hand side. So um, what you can see on the left hand side is the optical unit of a mass photometer, and on the upper part of this mass photometer, we can see the measurement compartment on which we zoomed in on the right-hand picture. And you can see we have an oil immersion objective there. And on top of that oil immersion objective, we have like a small stainless steel stage. And this stage will be used to place your glass slides and then to measure your respective AAV samples. Important to know about the SAMUX MP are uh, the facts that this has been specifically designed for AAV analytics. And the key features of the instrument are a technology that has been optimized for the mass range relevant for AAVs. So we are specifically looking into the mass range from 3 to 6 megadalton with an early cutoff at 500 kilodalton and then going up to 6 megadalton. Additionally, the hardware has been optimized for decontamination procedures, meaning that we have a couple of stainless steel elements and also a cover-up of the stage, so you can use decontamination procedures and also can place the instrument in a BSL-2 laboratory. Additionally, we have software that has been optimized for the quick and easy assessment of the empty full ratios. On the next few slides, I would like now to go into a couple of examples um, in terms of performances of the SAMUX MP that have been either derived in-house or have been generated with our collaboration partners. I would like to start looking into how the SAMUX MP can perform consistently across the entire range of empty full AV particles. And what you can see in front of you is a slide that has been generated in-house by our application specialists. We um, purchased two different commercial AV solutions, one being entirely empty and one showing about like 95% of full AV particles. Then we performed different mixtures, so different ratios um, of those two different commercial solutions, uh, naming them 0, 25% loading 50, 75 and 95%. Um, and then we measured those samples and triplicative measurements on the SAMUX MP instrument. The graph over on the right hand side of this slide shows you the correlation between the predicted loading um, that we aim for and the loading measured by the SAMUX MP. And what is important to stress out here is an R2 
uh, or, or R square value of 0 0.996, meaning that there is a nice correlation between the predicted loading of the instrument and the actual loading that was measured in a mass photometry experiment on a SAMUX MP instrument. Important to note is also that the error bars for this experiment are smaller than the actual data points that are depicted in this graph here. Coming now from some uh, in-house generated samples uh, towards a collaboration we did with Farmer on Gene Therapool in Liverpool, UK, um, where we wanted to determine if the SAMUX MP can quantify heterogeneously filled AAV populations. So in this case, Farmeron had access to a sample that they had um, already characterized via analytical ultracentrifugation, so short-term AUC, and they found to be three populations present in this specific AV sample. You can find the results on the right-hand side in the table at the bottom. So what they did is they took this sample and they performed three re uh, re uh, repeated experiments on the SAMUX MP instrument. And on the left-hand side of your screen, you can now find um, those three repeats represented in a mass histogram. And as you uh, will be able to appreciate, we could also identify three independent peaks with the SAMUX MP instrument, whereby the um, particles that here have been called A um, directly correlate with a mass of 3.7 megadalton, meaning those are very likely the empty AV particles. Taking the three repeats together in the darker orange um, part on the right-hand side of the table, you can find the percentages for the independent peaks, and you can nicely see that those results are in good agreement with the results that Farmeron had obtained with their analytical ultracentrifugation experiment. Next to heterogeneously filled uh, particles, one question that we get very often from our customers is if we can resolve partially filled AAVs with our SAMUX MP instrument. And the results of such kind of an experiment that we performed um, in collaboration with a biopharmaceutical company that focuses on innovative gene therapies can be found on the slide you see right now. So on the left-hand side of this slide, you can see the mass photometry histogram. So overall, the sample that was analyzed was an AV9 sample where the customer was quite convinced that capsules with varying mass were pre uh, present in the respective sample, representing empty, partially, and full AV particles. So in our measurement, what we could find is we could identify the 3.7 megadalton peak for the empty AAVs, and we got a very nice peak for the full AV particles as well that came around like 5.1, 5.2 megadalton. And then in between, we got a couple of signals as well that um, represent partially filled AV particles. To be able to confirm that we're talking about partially filled AV particles, this uh, customer extracted the single strand DNA cargo from those AAVs and put uh, the DNA on a DNA gel and the results you can find in the centerpiece of um, this slide. And what you can see here is that indeed they found the full length cargo to be present um, on the DNA gel, but then they found a couple of shorter bands at lower um, DNA um, base parasizing, which then nicely matches what we saw with the SAMUX MP instrument. An additional note uh, needs to be taken here. On the lower right hand side, you can find the percentage full capsids between the SAMUX MP and a sex miles that were um, towards the same percentage for full capsids with plus minus 5%. Um, after talking about heterogeneous populations and about partially filled AAVs, next I would like to take you to overfilled capsids that you can sometimes find when you work with AAV samples. So in this case, we have two different industrial collaborators, collaborator A and collaborator B, and both of these collaborators had samples available where they were sure that they had over, uh, overfilled uh, capsids available. And what you can see here in this case is that the E stands for empty, F is for the full capsids, and OF is representing the overfilled capsids. In case of our industrial collaborator B, we had the chance that this collaborator could confirm that the sample with mentioned here under F, so full capsids, contained one copy of the gene of interest, while the OF capsids here on the right-hand side um, indeed contained two copies of the genome. 
Another important aspect when working in general with um, AAV samples is uh, to get an idea if your AAV samples um, show some form of aggregation. So what you can see in front of you is an in-house experiment that we performed at Refine where we looked exactly into this AAV aggregation. So what had been done is we took a commercial available AAV8 sample and then we induced AAV aggregation by drying and reconstituting the sample. And what you can see here in the mass histogram that we derived from um, our SAMUX MP instrument is we get a nice peak for individual AAV particles, but then we can also find further particles to be identified that represent two, three, four, or even five AAV particles that are aggregated together. So overall, we can say that the SAMUX MP can give you insights into AAV aggregation. So especially here in case of the two AAV aggregates, we even see that we have so many particles that we can fit a Gaussian curve. However, besides giving an insight into AAV aggregation, the quantification of those populations has not been tested and validated, given that the um, molecular weight range goes from 500 kilodalton to 6 megadalton and not extends to, for example, here 15, 20 or above megadalton in molecular weight. Something that I'm happy to present here as well, and that is also part of the actual um, title of the presentation, is can the SAMUX MP um, perform reliably across different AAV serotypes? And we have some in-house data here and some data from collaborators. And I would like to start on the left-hand side of this slide, looking into like different empty AAV commercial um, samples available. So we tested AAV5, AAV6, AAV8, and AAVDJ. And for all these different serotypes, we got an independent nice peak on the SAMUX MP instrument that came about like 3.7 megadalton. And then we further confirm our findings by collaborating with the laboratory of Professor Albert Heck at Utrecht University um, in the Netherlands. So what you can find here is that they tested for us on the SAMUX MP as well. And this is the centerpiece of this slide. Uh, two different AAV8 uh, commercial available samples, empty ones, um, and one sample from um, AAV5 commercially available. And given that this um, research group um, is really experienced um, in charge detection mass spectrometry, they um, on top analyze their samples with charge detection mass spectrometry. And you can nicely see that those results from the CDMS match with what we found with the SAMUX MP instrument. Um, so if we now go to the next slide and looking a bit further into performances of the SAMUX MP instrument, um, what I would like to show you now are um, two collaborative efforts we did with Catapult Cell and Gene Therapy in the UK and again with Pharmaron Gene Therapy in Liverpool as well. So um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to compare the SAMUX MP instrument towards the gold standards for measuring AV samples, which are namely electron microscopy, so cryotem, and the analytical ultracentrifugation AUC. In case of Catapult, they tested four different samples. Um, and in those four different samples, we had two different serotypes. And for Farmron, they tested two different samples with also two different serotypes. In all cases, you will be able to appreciate that the results from the SAMUX MP are in good agreement with the results from AUC and Cryotem, just needing far less uh, sample in this case. So we just need uh, 10 to 20 microliters and 10 times um, 11 particles per milliliter um, and require about like a one minute measurement with the SAMUX MP instrument. Coming from different um, applicative um, examples to how reproducible the instrument can perform. I would like to show you this slide here where we looked into reproducibility with the manual SAMUX MP instrument. So what we did here is we um, performed uh, 18 independent replicates of the same AAV sample that we had access to. And out of those 18 replicates, 
um, we had three different operators, out of which one was a trained user on the Samux MP, and two were indeed untrained on the instrument, meaning that each operator ran six out of 18 replicates. And what you can find here on the left-hand side is the typical mass histogram that we've been already speaking about. So you can nicely see the different results for the different 18 replicates in the mass histogram. But more important are then the two um, graphs that are shown here. So the one in the center looks at the mass measurement precision in terms of uh, megadalton for the empty and the full AV particles over those 18 measurements. And on the right hand side, we look in the percentage of empty full measurement precision. Um, so in case of the mass precision of the instrument, which is here in the centerpiece, you can find that our CV for the full and the empty AVs was 1.1 and 1.2 percent. Um, so that is below the determined 2% that we give for the Samux MP. And then the empty full ratio precision, this was around like 5% for the manual system, as you can see here on the right hand side. Something that I'm very uh, happy to present to you and that has recently been added to the Samux um, instrument line is an update of our software that you can now also um, estimate the titers for the AV samples that you are measuring. So what you can see here on the left hand side is actually our Discover MP software, which you can use to analyze your AV samples after you acquire them on a mass photometer. So in the upper part, you can see a mass photometry video running. Um, so this one is right now just a picture, but here you will find your video with the individual particles to get some general information below. But what is really important then is that all those independent counts go into your mass histogram on the right hand side. You see here the two peaks for the empty and the full AV particles that are uh, specific to this one sample. And within our software, you now have the chance and you can see that um, in the orange rectangle to toggle on or off a rough tighter estimation. This tighter estimation, which is now here shown in the blue rectangle in the centerpiece of the uh, mass histogram here, um, gives you an idea of the tighter for each independent population you have in your actual sample. So we don't give you an overall tighter, but you get a tighter for your empty, your partial, and your full AV particles if those are actually present in your sample. Furthermore, those results can be then transferred um, onto the figures uh, that are generated by our softwares, as you can see it on the right hand side. And from there, you can take it uh, for your own use or you can export them also in form of a PDF file as well. So we have previously talked about reproducibility of results on the Samux MP. How about reproducibility in terms of tighter determination for the Samux MP? And this is what we want to show you here. So what we did is we took a commercial AAV8 sample. We performed five independent replicates. On the left-hand side, again, you get the mass histogram. In the center of the slide, you get the titers in particles per milliliter. Uh, first of all, for the five independent replicates, and then on the right-hand side, also tested with an ELISA. But what I find more important is the table below, because what you can see there is that the average tighter estimation for this sample was 2.3, 10 to the 11 particles per milliliter, while the standard deviation over five replicates was only 1.9 times 10 um, to the 10 particles per milliliter. And um, on top, um, it was not only very precise, the tighter determination with the Samox MP, but also the ELISA and the mass photometer were in good agreement on the total capsid titers. So um, what else can you use this AV tighter determination for? Uh, and this is now an example that we have performed with an industrial collaborator who had access to one of our auto systems uh, to give you an idea of what I'm going to talk about next. So what you can see here is that uh, this in, uh, industrial collaborator had 23 clones that were potentially being used for AAV9 production. And they measured the titers after capture chromatography. Uh, representative uh, mass photometry histogram is shown on the left hand side of this slide. And what they did is, and I will come to this in one minute, is they measured those samples on an auto system, which allowed them to test all 23 clones at once in one single Samux um, run. 
And what you can see as well is that there is again a good agreement between the ELISA titer and the mass photometry results with an average difference factor of 2.58. So we at Refine, we are always interested of pushing the limits of mass photometry. Um, so far, most of the data that I've shown you are linked to the manual SAMOX MP instrument. So to sum this instrument up, what it is important here is we have a very low sample consumption of 10 to 20 microliters per sample with a concentration of 10 to the 11 particles per milliliter. We have a very fast measurement and analysis. So in about five minutes time, you can measure your sample and get the results on your empty full ratio. We have minimal sample preparation. So you can usually use your samples in the existing buffer system you're already using. And then um, it's also a very easy to use system. However, we like to um, push it a bit further. So we decided to combine the manual SAMOX MP with a pipetting robot that combines the sensitivity and simplicity of mass photometry with the ease and efficiency of automation. So on top of everything I've already mentioned, you now have the chance to run your mass photometry experiments in, with an automated operation. You can run multiple samples in one run and you have an increased repeatability and consistency. So if we look a bit closer at the automated um, SAMOX um, MP, what you can see here is basically the instrument overall, which is like on the left-hand side. So we have the robot edition, um, and then we have the manual system in a closed compartment below the robot. And you get here in the centerpiece, you get an insight into how the system looks in the inside. So the advantage is, of course, that you have automated mass characterization for your AAVs. You have um, autonomous measurements of 24 samples in total, which allows you one and a half hours of uh, operator hands-free time which allows you a lot of flexibility, but that's not the only flexibility um, you can get because there's also the possibility to add this auto upgrade uh, to an existing SAMOX MP instrument. So if you already use a SAMOX MP, you can easily upgrade your existing instrument or you can buy a new system that is automatically coming with the robot. Again, as for the manual system, it is a very easy to use system. Um, goes down to the software that guides you step by step uh, through preparing um, your 24 samples and you see an increased data reproducibility. And this is exactly what I would like to talk about next. So the data reproducibility for the SAMOX MP auto instrument. So what have we done? We took um, three series of uh, 22 measurements. So I told you there are 24 samples available on the automated system. We usually recommend to have like one calibrand at the beginning, one calibrand at the end, and in between you have uh, the space for 22 measurements. And then we performed three series of 22 measurements. One series, like the mass histogram of one series of 22 measurements can, can be found on the left-hand side. And then in the center, you can find the loading percentage reproducibility, which comes with a CV of 3.7%. And then on the right-hand side, you can see the empty caps at mass repro reproducibility. And this comes with a CV for all three independent runs at a maximum of 2%. Um, so this is really important to note that uh, the SAMOX MP auto is even more reliable than your manual system, especially when it comes to like the CVs here. Um, those are absolutely great. What I would like to do next is I would like to talk about two case studies where our customers and partners use the SAMOX MP auto in their AAV workflow. And the first case study that I would like to do uh, or like to show you is from one of our industrial partners that um, tested the SAMOX MP Auto beta prototype. And what they had available was an AV9 sample with about like uh, three kilo base uh, basis of genome that they kept uh, that they purified via capture chromatography. And then they had a multi-step elution process that they monitored via UV. So we have two UV um, 
measurements here. So one is UV254, which uh, basically tells you about the DNA content of a certain illusion step. And then we have UV280, which is representative for the protein content of such illusion step. And generally, you can consider a UV ratio beyond 1.1 to be mainly full AV particles versus when we talk about a UV ratio below 1.1, we'll find that to be mainly empty. So what this customer did is they took the different samples, the different elution steps here, um, so A2 to A5, and they directly brought those samples to the SAMUX MP instrument. Um, and that is the one thing, uh, the first thing that I want to mention. So those fractions were directly loaded onto the well plate for analysis. So there was no further dilution needed, nor there was any buffer exchange of those samples required. So they took them directly from the capture chromatography after elution and put them on the SAMUX MP auto. And the instrument could confirm the results within 30 minutes, but gave additional insights into the purity and the partial and overfilled populations of those samples. So if we actually look at A5 and A4, you can appreciate that those two clearly show about more than 80% of full AV particles. However, in case of the A3 sample, we see that still about 65% um, of sample was actually full AV particles, which is maybe something you just do not want to throw away and want to make use of. So what the customer decided is they went from a multi-step elution protocol to a two-step elution protocol. The results you can find here. So first elution with a ratio of 0.65, second elution with a with a ratio, um, UV ratio of 1.17. And again, they took those samples directly onto the SAMUX MP auto and tested it with mass photometry. And what you can see here is that the fraction that's supposed to be mainly empty contains 71% of empty AAV particles and only 20% of full. And then when we look at the second step um, of this elution protocol, where we expect the full particles to be found, you can see in the mass histogram, there is a nice peak for the full AV particles. And we found 73% full AV particles with that specific optimized um, elution protocol. Another aspect that I wanted to show you, and that's the second case study for the SAMUX MP auto system, is uh, from another industrial partner that also used a beta, uh, like an auto beta prototype. And what we can see here is you can use the SAMUX MP auto to quickly compare different manufacturing protocols um, when looking at vector quality. So we have two different preparations, preparation A and preparation B. And both of them were with the same AV8 vector. However, they were produced with different manufacturing protocols. And while vector A showed a higher transgene activity after transduction um, compared to vector B, the titers were nearly identical. So the customer went back to our SAMUX MP auto system and tested the two samples on the mass photometer. And what you can clearly see is that in case of the um, preparation A, we have two clear populations, one empty, one full. And with the second uh, measurement, so the B preparation, you can see a lot of like partially filled particles, which means that we saw a lot of fragmentation for this specific purification, agreeing with the findings of this customer that they had previously done via QC and functional assays. So this is everything that I wanted to tell you about the SAMUX MP Auto. Something that I now wanted to come to is how can we at Refine support you when you want to purchase a SAMUX MP or a SAMUX MP Auto. And one, uh, one part of it is that we, of course, want to make sure that you're successful in your measurements. And for that, we have uh, started to introduce our own consumable line. So to allow you more hassle-free measurement with reduced sample preparation time and greater data confidence. So we have kits available for new customers, including then something that is called the alignment assistant package so that you get some alignment tools, some tweezers, some magnetic slide holders. But then, of course, also for existing customers, we have uh, preparation packages and the glass slides themselves to uh, ready to be purchased via our web page. So if we want to sum up a bit more the specifications of the instrument, 
we can do that right now here. So if we look at the Samux MP, the mass range, we talked about this, is 500 kilodalton up to 6 uh, megadalton. And then the optimal um, particle concentration is 10 to the 11 particles per milliliter in a sample volume, again, of 10 to 20 microliters. It is not required to have any more sample than that. Something that I haven't talked about yet, but that is very important for the instrument as well, is of course the resolution. So we are talking of a, uh, for a resolution of 235 kilodalton um, at 3.7 megadalton. That means if you have your MTAV peak at 3.7 megadalton, then we can resolve a second peak that is like in between those two peaks down to baseline needs to be with a size difference of 235 kilodalton. So it has to be at 3.9 um, or 3.5 megadalton to be completely separated from the initial MTAV peak. The mass precision, I showed you a couple of examples, um, is plus minus 2%, while the intersystem mass precision is plus minus 3%. And we give the mass error for uh, with plus minus 5%. However, this is uh, for single measurements. I've shown you a couple of data for the automated as well as for the manual system. If you perform repeated experiments, we see a CV of plus minus 2%. So now I am very happy to go a bit more into detail um, after this uh, short summary, sorry. Uh, so we have a short summary of what I've been telling you so far. So I hope I could show you that the Samux MP is a fast, cost-efficient, and easy-to-use system that doesn't require much sample volume and sample preparation. So we work at single resolution. Um, we have a label-free measurement in the native state of your sample. You will definitely need less than five minutes per measurement, including the analysis. So really quick, um, really easy, with a low sample amount. Again, 10 to 20 microliters is only required and about like 10 to the 11 particles per milliliter. The instrument itself is very easy to use. On a day-to-day -day basis, when we go out as field application specialists, we need less than one day of training and people feel confident to use a mass photometer. It's a very small instrument, so it fits onto your lab bench and it has very low operational costs because each measurement comes with less than five US dollars per measurement. So now, after this summary, I would like to give you a bit of an insight into what we've been recently doing and what we will be doing next at Refine. And what we've been recently doing is that Refine has been working to offer a GMP solution for our Samox instrument line, meaning that you can now combine your Samox MP or your Samox MP Auto for AAV analytics in a GMP regulated environment. This includes 21 CFR 11 compliant software, um, and that entails user authentication, access control, audit trails, and the electronic signatures at export. And of course, we also take care of the system qualification and the support, meaning we give you a comprehensive training and documentation, and we will perform the IQOQ as well. So when looking at the uh, 21 CFR 11 compliance software for the Samox MP and the Samox MP Auto, this is a set of three different softwares, Refines Manage MP, Refines Acquire MP, and Refines Evaluate MPS. Uh, in case of Manage MP, this is used to manage users' authentication and the access control. It uh, allows you to visualize and export the audit trail as required, and it defines the system configuration. Acquire MP um, is the software to operate the mass photometer and acquire all the data and of course to also process those raw data and quantify the particles. Then um, you use those data in Refines Evaluate MPS to determine the AV ratios for full, empty and partially full AV particles. And you have the chance there as well to export those data uh, with an electronic signature if that is required. To give you a few insights into that software, let's first have a look at uh, Manage MP and the user management and access, uh, access control. So you can see here a couple of screenshots from our Manage MP software. So basically, um, there's a required login for accessing different software applications. Um, the admin has uh, the access control and permissions. So you can see that here in the upper uh, left-hand corner. So for each individual user, you can respectively set the um, permissions for the different software settings. 
You have the ability to lock and unlock users as well. And there are security measures in place to ensure secure access. For example, that you can also set a certain um, uh, that you can set a certain time frame um, in which a password needs to be renewed. Um, in terms of the audit trail, this is obviously automatically generated. There are no options available to modify, delete, or deactivate um, the audit trail. There is, uh, however, the ability to export the audit trails in a human readable form. Um, and you have the chance to filter or to search the audit trail as well if that is required. Um, one um, aspect that is also important when, when it comes to the analysis um, in, the, in the Evaluate MPS software, we have an automated workflow for quantification of empty full AV ratios, which allows you an even easier determination of empty, partially filled, and full AV particles. And given your permissions, you might even be able to have like manual options available for determining AV ratios, including the overfilled particles. And on the lower right-hand side, what you can see here is that there is an automated fitting um, for calibration included in the software as well. Um, I already mentioned the electronic signatures at data export. You can see them here in front of you. So there is an easy way to export all final data in, again, a human readable form, so which means practically PDF. Um, and then we have the electronic signatures available for the PDF report at the end if that is required. And of course, those information will also be locked within the audit trail. So overall, I hope I could show you in the last about 40 minutes that the SAMOX MP line allows a fast and reliable AV capset analysis. And to just sum up what we've been mainly talking about, so the SAMOX MP and the SAMOX MP auto allow precise empty full ratio measurements within a, a few minutes for any zero type at really minimal operational costs. We have very low sample volumes and concentrations and very little sample preparation is required. Um, and we have an easy experimental procedure and really tailored data analysis software. So again, take into account less than five minutes. Overall, the SAMOX um, MP and the SAMOX MP Auto belong to our instrument line of mass photometers. So this is uh, complemented then by the 2MP, which is our second generation mass photometer for single molecule mass measurements. The difference between the 2MP and the SAMOX MP practically is that our 2MP instrument has a molecular weight range from 30 kilodalton up to 5 megadalton and has a broader range of applications that can be covered. So for example, protein-protein interactions, um, interactions of proteins and nucleic acids, um, purity measurements and QCing of proteins. And of course, also this instrument is available in an automated fashion. Um, the last few minutes I would like to, however, spend to tell you about something really exciting that fits very well within the scope of today's webinar. And this is that Refine has to make an announcement because we extend our family of mass photometers with a new tool to allow rapid analysis of large viral vectors. And this is the Caritro MP. So the Caritro MP, and you can again see we are talking about a benchtop instrument, is an instrument that allows you to assess lentivirus and adenovirus purity and stability within minutes. So the instrument is going to come to, soon to the market. We are already taking orders for the instrument that will be delivered in the first quarter of next year. And this instrument, however, is based on a new technology, which is called macro mass photometry. And this is required due to the fact that those viral vectors that we are now looking at are basically having a much larger particle diameter up to about like 100 nanometers, which could not be measured just purely by mass photometry. And to give you an idea of what the Caritro MP can do, I would like to show you some example data that we have obtained already. Um, and let me guide you through the graph on the left hand side. So important to note is that the data given by the Caritro will give you two types of parameters different to a mass photometry experiment. So first of all, you will get the contrast of your particles, which is a proxy for mass. And the proxy for mass, the contrast, you can find here on the x-axis as an individual histogram. And then we have the size, which is the parameter for the particle diameter. 
And the particle diameter you can see here on the y-axis as an individual um, uh, histogram on the right hand side. And what we now can do, or what the Caritro MP can do, is it can combine um, for those particles, each individual particle. And here we are looking at an adenovirus example where we have a mixture of full, empty, and fragmented adenovirus cup seeds. Those three different populations could not be distinguished if we would just look at the, uh, just at the size alone. So if we just look at the size alone, those uh, three different um, mixtures cannot be identified. But then if you look at the contour plot here, each individual particle is not only assigned a size, so a particle diameter, but is also assigned a contrast. And by that, we can separate between full adenoviruses, between empty adenoviruses, and between fragmented adenoviruses. So what the Caritra MP offers you is a fast and simple qualitative analysis for adeno and lentiviruses. So you can differentiate, for example, multiple populations, even if they have the same size. You can evaluate relative changes across a sample from really crude to um, purified sample. And the Caritra MP allows you to quickly assess the purity and stability of adenovirus and lentivirus samples. You can compare production or purification methods, and you can identify batch-to-batch -batch variations. Uh, please understand those two slides for the Caritro as a market exciter. We are very happy to have a launch webinar on the 6th of December, which you can find when you go to our webpage, and you're going to get more information on the Caritro MP in this launch webinar. With this, I am at the end of my presentation. Um, I hope I could give you some insights into how mass photometry and the SAMOX MP can help um, with your AAV samples. I thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions.